Uh, but I am about to officially hit the button. So, live. Hey. Hey, everybody. It looks like there's a little bit of a delay. So that I'm glad we followed that, that rule, everybody. <laughs> live before being live. But hey, everybody, welcome. I am here with Matthew Adams. He's the chief photographer and investigative photojournalist for Mystery Wire and 8 News Now out in Vegas. We've been seeing Mystery Wire everywhere lately with the recent UFO or UAP photo leaks. And so I thought it would be really fun to talk to Matthew about um, covering this topic in this you know, day and age and just whatever. So thank you so much, Matthew, for being here. How are you doing well, this evening? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, we're doing pretty good here in the city of sin, but we're paying for our <laughs> sins right now. It's uh, There's a little bit of hellfire coming upon us and I, I i don't hopefully it's not for our sinful ways but we'll see Wonder, well we were chatting before we started you know so you're in vegas so, and i'm in texas and it's normally i mean this time of year it should be 102 you know just, just it miserable walking outside but we've been getting like little little bits of rain so yeah i, mean, I don't know maybe maybe texas is is being blessed right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, Maybe. that's good. Good for you. We're, t we're taking all the heat for you. Literally. That's what I get. That's what I get. It'll be just, you know, miserable soon enough. I'm sure. Um, hold on. Let me turn off my, my phone. Sorry, guys. We're live clearly. Okay. No more distractions. All right. So yeah. So Vegas, so you're like two hours, you're like, guess about like dinner time right now i guess huh yeah 6 30 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, time zones um just trip me up uh so how how long have you been working at mystery wire because well, i've seen mystery in the ufo sphere for like a really long time well mystery wire is kind of a it's kind of a new creation. It's really been around for a couple of years now. Um, and the original thought behind it was um, the I team, the KLAS I team, the eight news now I team. We have a huge, huge backlog of just really great stories about all different types of things. I mean, it's not all UFOs. It's, it's stories about military secrets. It's stories about the test site. It's stories about area 51. And they're, they're, they're real stories. They're not just conspiracy, they're vetted. Um, it's real new, that stuff we've done on CBS here in Las Vegas. I've been doing it for the past 21 years. I've been working with George for 20 of those years. Um, so, you know, it, we just, we, we sat around and we thought, you know what, there should be an app just so people can go back and enjoy these stories. Because when George started doing this, this really Las Vegas was a small town. And so the audience for these stories that just aired once was probably pretty small. You got to think, you know, there were That's maybe 200, idiot. yeah, maybe 250,000 people here and, and not all of them were watching at the same time. So, you know, the, the audience was limited. And so all these great stories stashed away in the Channel 8 vaults, like we got to share these with people they're so good and there's so many of them so that's what we started doing we started going through all these old stories and and as we were doing that we're also producing new stories where we're you know continuing investigating the ufo and the the phenomenon topic and uh so that's kind of brought us to that so it's really a collection of what what is originally eight news as material and it's been collated and put on a mystery wire. And now we're continuing the same work under the mystery wire banner. Yeah, I'm not sure why I never really followed that timeline. I just know George Knapp has been in this, you know, is a huge role in disclosure and has been building to it for years and covering this topic. And so, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. But 20 years. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm, I consider so you know myself George extremely really well. fortunate. 
yeah, what a ride to go on. Do you, yeah. so like 20 years ago, what types of things were you covering? Was it, was George interested in this like right away? And, um, or was that something that just culminated over time? And, you know, now we're here. Well, George has, even before I was working at Channel 8, George has been covering this topic at Channel 8 in Las Vegas since 1989, and a little bit before that, um, started covering Area 51. Um, one, of his, uh, one of his journalistic friends and, and, and kind of his mentor at Channel 8 had been given this information from John Lear, um, who's father was the uh, you know the creator of the Learjet and is kind of a UFO uh, I don't know part of the UFO Illuminati let's say and uh, he was given this information and he looked at it and he was kind of like yeah I no I don't want to I don't want to get into this and George was kind of I think in the background looking over his shoulder and it's like yeah give it to me I'll, I'll look into it and that's kind of how George got onto the the John Lear Bob Lazar ride into ufology you know so when you met him he was kind of already on, on the ride if, if that makes sense for sure yeah yeah, yeah. so d is that how you discovered the topic were you always interested in this like how yeah. yeah I've never really before I was working with George I was I mean I'm still very skeptical I think uh I'm a little bit of a Debbie Downer sometimes for mystery wire and you know we get a lot of videos sent to us and you know we get excited about them and we look over them and and I'm kind of the guy's like yeah this is not what it kind of looks like as a photographer yeah. I kind of know how cameras work and but I was never really interested in it and I was moving out to Las Vegas I was getting a job I was just kind of moving along in my career as a, a photojournalist and I got a job at Channel 8 and even uh a girlfriend I had at the time, she was like, that's where George Knapp works. And I'm like, who? Who's George Knapp? And she had heard him for years on Coast to Coast doing news reports and then also later filling in. And uh, and so I, I really didn't have any idea what I was so getting funny. into. Usually not to be like uh, stereotypical or anything, but I, I hear so often from guys who are really into UFOs and like yeah my girlfriend has nothing to do with this like she doesn't know anything so it's so funny to, to hear like the reverse you know for a change <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so that's, oh, that's interesting yeah uh, so the the photographer that had been working with George for about nine years up until that point and he had made um, an initial trip out to Skinwalker Ranch the first time that George went out there with uh, with a photographer to record stuff and he had decided he was going to be Mr. Mom. He had just had uh, kids. When, and when was this? Do you, do you that was that would be two thousand one. And when and no one no one applied for the job. What's that? You know who was was that when Bigelow was owning the ranch or, or yeah Bigelow owned it up past like two thousand fifteen. So he he owned it for quite a while. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so he, I, he had moved on and no one else applied for the job. They were all, I think, scared of doing that work and doing the hard work. And that. Yeah. So I, I jumped on it wow. and, and started working with George and I had no idea what I was in for. So you were actually at Skinwalker Ranch? Yeah, I've, I've been there. I've been, I don't even really know how many times I've been there. It's I been mean, it multiple sense. times. I mean, I, that's, these are the kinds of, you know, I was wanting to ask you, oh, where's George Knapp been and Mystery Wire and Nate News now and guessing, oh, maybe, you know, you would have been there too, <laughs> documenting it all. But, you know, I wasn't really sure, you know, at, you know, to, to what extent. So, yeah, so let's, let's definitely talk about your experiences at Skinwalker Ranch. We just had dragging on uh from the Sh history channel show so we just did an interview with him and i've been doing um well the show just the history channel show not the actual right. <laughs> they're both the one and the same right but we just finished uh reviewing that series for a live stream so i am like 
I have so much Skinwalker Ranch, you know, thoughts and things in my head. And I know, I know the viewers do too. So yeah. What, 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 what were the vibes there? How did, how did it feel being there? Uh, you know, it's, a. Uh... And I, I, I also know Dragon. I've met him several times. He's a, he's a really great guy. And uh, awesome. uh, people get uh, the wrong message whenever they hear his nickname. And I know he's explained that several times, but uh, he is, he's the furthest from a dragon. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's kind of the joke. And um, he, he's, he's a good guy, gentle soul. But yeah, I, uh, I went out there in 2000 two was my first visit out there and the whole plan was was george and colin kelleher were writing their book hunt for the skinwalker and they were still going out there and interviewing people in the basin um because as people that know much about skinwalker ranch it's it's more than just the ranch it's it's the entire uinta basin that historically have had right. all types of strange things happen and it's not just UFOs. There's stories of poltergeist type activity. There's portals that opened other dimensions. There's, and you know, when I, when I first went out there and this is 2002, there, no one knew much about any of this stuff. There were a few articles in the Salt Lake City newspaper. Um, I was super skeptical. And, and when I got out there, it felt like, uh, I wanted to become a rancher. I wasn't intimidated. It mm -hmm. was, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And yeah, Brandon and, Fugel, he, he was on the, the stream the other day and he was saying it was, a, it's a really peaceful place, you know? To yeah. And I never had anything but really good vibes out there. Um, but I've been face to face with so, so many people in that area that have had just the most amazing and crazy experiences. And, uh, and they're, they're not just, they're oil executives. They're, they're ranchers that have, Mormon ranchers that have lived there for, you know, several generations. Like they're not the people that would come out and talk about this stuff if it didn't have some sort of great impact on, on their lives. And even through all of that, like it's still in the back of my head, I'm just like, well, I haven't seen anything. So, yeah. So you haven't had, you know, experience yet. Um, yeah. Cause Brandon Fugel was also sharing. So for those who don't know the, the current owner of the ranch, how it's very peaceful for him there, but he did finally, I believe have a UFO encounter there. So it seems like if you spend enough time at the ranch, you know, like something's going to happen. Um, so it sounds like when you had your camera there, nothing happened did you know around you in your vicinity but were there any occurrences you know um uh, when you were you know covering the ranch with George, or, or I guess just or even just like I guess uh conversations you had with people in the the basin that you that you remember that really stuck out to you um you know there there was an experience so we it's kind of a long story about the the documentary because you know we've been George, I think originally the first shoot was in 1999. Then I did more in 02. We went back in like 04, 06, 07. I think we, at that point, we were kind of done. We were like, okay, we've got enough to put together a documentary. And so we kind of ask a little bit of a permission from Robert Bigelow is like, hey, we're ready to move forward with this. And it was at that point, he was like, no, you can't do it. And we really, you know, we, he really had no say in whether we could or couldn't. He obviously granted us permission to be there. And we, we were the only media that were allowed to be there for years and years. Like no one else was allowed on that ranch. And even after he sold it, I think when Brandon bought it, I think we were probably the first ones that were allowed on there after he bought it. Mm -hmm. um, so he was, um, he was apprehensive about us producing this documentary. The book had caused him a lot of turmoil, a lot of people looking in, into him. And he's a very private guy and, you know, didn't appreciate that sort of oh, thing. And so that, That's the, the story. He was kind of tired of having the ranch, you know, by the time he 
that makes sense if he was getting, I guess, flat. Well, it was, it was an 09 that we were given a hard no. And we, like I said, we could have gone forward. Later, we started hearing these rumors that the government was actually doing studies out there. And once again, I'm back in like this skeptical moment where like, I've never seen anything out there. This place is awesome. I, I just want to raise cows out there. Uh, <laughs> and, but like, we're hearing these rumors about all this stuff. Well, what happened is Lou Elizondo's predecessor at ATIP had read the book, heard about the ranch, contacted Bigelow and said, I want to go out there. And uh, he made one trip out there. And within an extremely short period of time, he was presented something that nobody else saw that um, really affected him. And it was at that point that he went to Harry Reid and started pressuring Harry to, to try to get some funding for a, a UFO study. And that's kind of how OSAP and Bass, it's not kind of, it's exactly how OSAP and Bass got started, was this trip that, that Lou Elizondo's predecessor made out to the ranch. It had a profound effect on him. And, uh, and that's kind of how it all started. So wow. that is why we weren't allowed at the ranch, is because at that time, the OSAP study was going on. He didn't want us to produce a documentary to get more attention to the ranch, mm -hmm. to get more tourists out there. And so we just kind of pumped the brakes. Yeah. Why do you think they trusted? I mean, because you're the only media that was allowed. You know, why was it because uh, you guys were just really persistent or, you know, George just his because he was a true maybe believer in this? You know, why do you think you guys were allowed, allowed on there in the first place? Well, I wouldn't even say that George is a true believer. Um, right. Yeah. That's George right. is, and and we follow, like we 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 are journalists. Number one, like mm -hmm. that's. I'm a photographer. I you know I I document things, but our whole idea is 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 journalism. And mm -hmm. and you know you'll never hear George profess that things are you know this is alien or this. Now he might give some sort of opinion, like hey maybe it's this, maybe it's that, but never is is are we going to step out on a limb and, and, and say, this is alien. This is from another mm -hmm. world. This is interplanetary. It's, you can't do that. And then uh, I think that's a lot of the problem is people want that so much. Oh yeah. But, uh, you just, yeah, tell you me just exactly how that. many alien species there are <clears throat> and you know what their agenda is and, and yeah, just spell it all out for me, you know? And I'll... Yeah. So, so true. And, yeah. What were you going to say? Um, it was really like 2016 and 17 when like all these worlds started to collide. And it was like, it was one of those moments where like my stomach just dropped because it's like, we really learned for sure that all this stuff was 100% happening at this ranch like the government the dia i've been oh, out no. there for Shoot. over gotcha. Did I, lose you? I lost i lost you for a second so you said your stomach dropped about 2017 that's like december new york times you know like yeah. reveal yeah yeah go ahead so we 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 knew all the stuff that was going on we we wanted to break the story and someone that was wiser was kind of like hey maybe the New York times would be the place to do this because I just remember this so well, <laughs> a, a local, a local news station is not going to have the same impact as the New York times. Oh, was that painful? To... Yeah. 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 But it will also was satisfying because once again, you've got the old gray lady confirming all the things that, that you you've been collecting and reporting on for all these years. So. Mm -hmm. And that none of it was in vain and it, you know, it, it all mattered. And, um, and, and then look at things today, you know, now I think um, Georgia mystery wire and eight news now are getting a lot of credit for, 
a lot of these investigations and getting a lot of photo leaks, you know, from, you know, that team versus New York Times. Are you feeling, are you feeling that, are you guys feeling that now? Or is it kind of like too little, too late a little bit? Um, No, it's, it's actually really been, it's been strange. It's, I mean, I, I listen to different podcasts. I don't, I don't, I, this is not like everything I'm about. Uh, it's obviously something that I, I'm very interested in, but you know, I have varied interests in many other things and I'm listening to all these different podcasts and like, they're talking about mystery wire and they're talking about videos that have been released. And it's, it's a little surreal. Cause it's like, wow. Like it, it almost like almost to the level that you've had an effect on pop culture, which is, uh, which is kind of strange. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is strange. I mean, like 2017 was definitely a key, a key moment because, you know, and I, I did we, did we maybe meet at alien con or something like way back we in did. the day? I thought we had, and I meant to ask you, um, before, but I'm, um, yeah. So that was like, I don't know what year that was, but I feel like that's like kind of just when things were just really kind of starting to go off the rails. Um, but I just remember before, you know, the New York Times article, like officially UFOs weren't real. You know, the, people weren't talking about UAP, you know, nevertheless. And then when the New York Times article came out, well, suddenly, okay, UFOs are real and it legitimized um yeah at the time I guess you know now I've been reporting on UFOs for like over 10 years so um it legitimized you know a lot a lot of years of research and so I can only imagine from George's perspective and in your perspective um you know what well I mean I can't imagine (laughs) what it what it's like it's surreal you know it's like we've entered into like some parallel reality or, or something <laughs> well i'm i'm just glad that that people are taking things seriously um you know george has lived with being overly scrutinized being made fun of he has a whole collection of editorial cartoons in his house that are framed that are horrible cartoons of him acting like an idiot and chasing ufos with a butterfly net and all these like all kind of wow. cruel things, the same things we see on Twitter these days, the, wow. the actual like hostile attitude towards it. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I'm really glad that he's been able to see all of his hard work come to fruition. Yeah. So yeah, like all the, the hate, you know, on social media, I guess back in the day it was comic strips, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, the hate's real on social media and George has always seem to get a little bit of that where where do you think that comes from you know you're you said you're skeptical and um george is a truth seeker he doesn't necessarily believe you know every ufo is an alien so seems pretty reasonable with his investigations and interpretations where does this hate come from i i there's a lot of things i could a lot of opinions i could give on that i Honestly, I, 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 I don't, I almost don't want to say it. I just think people are just jealous. Oh, shoot, um, cut again, but you're, I think we, I think you were saying jealousy. I think it, I think, it, it, yeah. I think it really does come from jealousy. And, yeah. and like one example, whenever we were finishing up the last segments of hunt for the skinwalker, um, and this is a long way around the block. I'll try to, keep it short, but Mark Allen, who is one of the co-founders of Above Top Secret, um, he became friends with Robbie Williams, then introduced Robbie Williams to George. When we went out to the last segment, we invited George and Robbie, I mean, Mark Allen and Robbie to come with us. They didn't, Robbie, of course, being a superstar and can do anything he wants to do, did not want to drive from Las Vegas to the ranch. I don't blame him. So we took a plane, which was awesome. <laughs> like I've never had such a great experience in my life taking yeah. a private plane. Um, it was fantastic. Well, we took some pictures on the plane and just to drum up some attention for the movie, we posted it on social media and immediately 
people are coming out and accusing us of working for Bob Bigelow, for riding on Bob Bigelow's private uh -huh. plane. Bob Bigelow is now the secret owner of Skinwalker Ranch. He didn't really sell it. And, and they went out, they went so far as they're running tail numbers on the plane. They're tracking where the plane went from place to place across mm -hmm. the country. And all this while, we're just like, guys, like, seriously, like, no, Robbie Williams rented this Would plane. Would you have so said could... no if Robbie Williams said, hey, I want to go on a plane to, was it Skinwalker Ranch too? Yeah, I'm right also... out we the land. <laughs> Skinwalker Ranch. Right. No, I'm. I'm too good for that. Yeah, that's so yeah. Funny. We landed in Vernal, and and it became like hostile, and it was uh, it was kind of disappointing uh, to see that happen. Whenever it, it there was really nothing to it, and mm -hmm. there's so much of that going on right now. Well, I mean, that means you matter. You're you know you're pushing buttons, but you're you know you're doing something that's affecting people. And I think the UFO topic is it's a pretty serious one, right? And to some people, it's pretty scary and it just people have a reaction and they'll they're going to take it out on the messenger right i'm going to take it out on whoever's you know bringing them the information you know telling them that these are real so um well we've okay, also had yeah. very very strange circumstances where people are actually doing podcasts and claiming that uh george knapp has never been to skinwalker ranch and they're I saying multiple multiple times one. yeah multiple times across and i'm not going to name any names but uh someone that used to work as a security guard out there and he's saying that george knapp never went out there and like it's like hold on a second i uh not only do i have an entire documentary a video that i shot on the property yeah, i'm pretty sure <laughs> i also have many candid photos of us mm -hmm. out there working behind the scenes and so it, it was really that, strange. That's a new one. Yeah, I hadn't heard that at all. I mean, I know people, um, the the Mystery Wire uh, logo, you know, on the UFO photos, people, you know, gave a hard time. It's like, we finally have people that have been, you know, researching this and bringing this forward. And we finally have a chance, you know, to give them proper due credit for this. So, you know, we should want, um, people to go back to Mystery Wire and to go to UFO Twitter, you know, for more information, you know, when they learn about these things. So yeah, people had a big reaction to that too. Um, maybe kind of like, maybe people are feeling like they're missing out, you know, oh, you guys are part of Disclosure. You guys are actually doing this and making this happen. And, you know, I'm not part of it. Um, like Disclosure FOMO or, or whatever. <laughs> Um, but yeah, man, that that's real. But you know, I mean, if anybody I know, um, hearing George speak at AlienCon, he can have um, he he can have a way with his words with uh, people that annoy him, <laughs> so he can be pretty funny. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm sure if any you know if anybody can take it, you know, he could take it. But um, it is nice to see though, uh, Mystery Wire and and George and all you guys get your your proper credit in the in the news as surreal I'm, as i'm sure it is i do have to ask from that like we can definitely talk about skinwalker ranch more too and i know we want to talk about bob lazar and um i'm seeing some good comments in the the chat so i have a lot of questions but i do i do want to get to some of the more recent you know photo leaks you know to come out of mystery wire knowing that you you said you're kind of more the skeptical one and sometimes you know people get an annoyed at you you know um what is your take on some of this evidence I know you know, as a UFO researcher myself it's really hard when you just have photos and you don't have videos and and things like that and, and it is easy to you know po give some possible identifications uh so so what's your, yeah what's your take your honest take on well, um, it's uh, one thing I think would be the best example to look out out, out of all of these most recent releases is the USS Omaha swarm. Mm -hmm. um, initial, initially, um, we released a photo from the UAP task force and I had three different photos, black and white of the FLIR video. And, um, and, that was immediately 
acknowledged by the Pentagon as being real. They, they have not officially said that it's unidentified, but they have verified that it came from Navy. It was, it was photographed by Navy personnel. It and then the next, it happened. And then the next thing that came out was the actual video where you can see it going into the water and you can hear the emotion in the sailors' voices as they're watching this, as they're you know talking about the things that it's doing. Mm-hmm. Then the radar comes out. And this is all the same event. So it's, it's not two separate things. Like this is the same thing happening mm-hmm. simultaneously. These teams are at two different monitors that are side by side on the ship. And they're shooting both these monitors, different angles at the same time, showing what's happening. One is showing the FLIR video. One is showing the radar, what's happening on the radar. Um, the radar shows actual targets disappearing. The video shows a target disappearing. Then you go to the stuff that's on board the ship and it's actual camera footage and it's just showing some illuminated lights in the distance with what seems to be to me and I think most other people kind of feel like it's probably an airplane passing over the top of them. That's from the exact same incident. So now we know that the radar is not glitching, the FLIR is not seeing a ghost, Mm -hmm we're also confirming it with eyeballs. So we have like three big pieces of information on one singular event. And there's a, I wish I could remember it right now, but there's a really great YouTube video where a former Navy pilot takes all these things and starts describing what's happening exactly in each one. And it really just shows that each piece of information is backing up the next one. It's not separate pieces. It all ties together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I'm so glad you brought that up that, yeah, that's huge. Um, I think what I was imagining in my head were the, the three, you know, standalone images where I know there was a lot of fun debate about, um, there was the, um, metallic blimp, um, that a lot of people kind of joked that that was, I think, is that the Batman balloon? I think maybe, you know, that people were joking about that one and then, um, there was the triangle, I guess, right? Or right. Yes. And then what is the other nickname? But I mean, you're you're familiar. So those ones were a little bit frustrating for me because again, like you don't have the videos, the context, and you know, behind them. So you just kind of have, but yeah, that that was huge, huge that that one you mentioned. Uh, what about the still images? Did like the skeptic in you? um ha- have any you know did you join some of the the twitter debate on that because i wasn't uh, totally ag- i wasn't totally against some of i guess you could say the hate on some of those photos just because i've seen so many you know as a ufo researcher myself you know and people haven't been impressed by those similar looking uh ufos if that makes sense Right. Uh, so like ones like I think the halo UFO is kind of what I call it too. So yeah, what was your take on those? I think the importance of those is the testimony of the pilots. Yep. Um, I obviously they're not showing anything that we can differentiate to, to make fit our worldview and what we think they should be. We want to make it into a balloon. I get that. Um, I think you, everyone heard, which made headlines more than anything else from the 60 minutes report was, uh, Ryan Graves stating that we saw UFOs every day. Mm -hmm. So these aren't just things that they see coming up and they whip out their phones and they try to get a shot of them and they're flying by. They know what they're coming up on. They, they have seen these on a regular basis. They're not just blips that appeared once and they never saw again and that was the best they could get of them it's hard to take a picture in a moving car Uh, imagine taking it in a plane that's almost going the the speed of sound or maybe a little less than that i mean and then you're talking about an object that is maybe at most 20 feet long that's the best they could survive even if it were a tic tac and it were 40 feet long like commander fravor talks about how, how would you fly past that and get a close-up photo of it? And honestly, you look at those photos and they're pretty, pretty clear. The inside of the cockpit is very clear. 
you can tell that there's not a lot of motion other than maybe the motion of whatever the craft is doing outside or the motion that the craft seems to have because the plane is flying by. They're still very clear. And the EXIF data shows a really fast shutter speed. And as a photographer, you know, the faster the shutter speed, the more frozen the image actually is. And they're iPhones. So they don't have yeah. ND, ND filters to, to, to help that out. So they're taking, you know, very quick shutter speed. So I, I don't really know, but I think the testimony of the pilots is the, is the key to those. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm, I come across that just all the time, you know, where, you know, it's funny. It's like, if you have something that has this really compelling testimony and you just share the testimony and people are just eat it up. Right. But, Oh, what do you know? They actually have a photo of it too. You show a photo. Oh, what's with this grainy picture, of, you know, that I can't make out. I don't think that this person saw anything. So it's definitely a pattern, you know, that I've seen, you know, across just like, um, you know, and sometimes there are people with military backgrounds, you know, seen things, you know, will write in, but kind of everyday testimony. And so, yeah, I see that happening here again, you know, and, and then the, the worldwide stage, you know, or even when we have these credible pilot testimony to back it up to say, this was not a Batman balloon, <laughs> like just, you know, just cause you want to call it a Batman balloon. It's not a Batman balloon. Um, so what, it, and and also, you know, great point about we're trying to put UFOs into a box, right? And we think that they should look like this, you know, talk like this, act like this, you know, whatever. Um, we shouldn't have assumptions, right? So, you know, having covered this for like a good 20 years now, I know that you can't be sure and you're a journalist, um, but what do you think is going on here? Why aren't we seeing, you know, your, your classic detailed spaceships, you know, from the sci-fi movies, you know, do you have theories? Um, you know, I, I, there are so many people much smarter than I that, that have theories on this stuff. And, and a lot of kind of my feelings on it probably I couldn't say would be original. Um, so I, I'd hesitate to even make a guess. I really lean towards the fact that, and, and we can step through it. You've heard it before. And I, you know, dogs can hear sounds we can't hear. There are insects that can see things that we can't see. When we turn on an infrared camera, we definitely can see things that we can't see with our eyes. How do we know how we're just talking about hearing and sight, how we're limited in our senses. We're clearly limited by our senses. There are bugs that have better senses in some areas than we have. There are animals that are, have much better senses than we have. So we know we're limited in that. We say we have five senses, but how do we know that that's all there are? So my, my thought behind it is kind of maybe we're just not seeing because we can't. And mm -hmm. there are times where, and maybe this is what a uh, Skinwalker Ranch is. There are places that are maybe the veil is a little thinner and you can maybe see through the veil once in a while. And then maybe there are times where they, they choose to reveal themselves. So I... I, I'm never one to jump to interplanetary, which obviously the, the infinite theory with the galaxy would definitely shows that there has to be other intelligent life when actually this exact event is happening somewhere else. Then of course there's an infinite amount of things, but I'm, I kind of lean towards maybe there's a interdimensional situation that's happening maybe th these things are not new the reports have been going on forever i i actually have a quote i there's if anyone wants to go on the national archives youtube page and just search ufo they have some really uh short not a lot but interesting videos on there and there's one from uh, 1952 it's general john samford and he this was right before project blue book got started 
And he says, we can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected to any secret development by an agency of the United States. And you could take that quote and it's basically what the UAP task force says. Mm -hmm. This was in 1952 before yeah. Project Blue Book even got started. And yeah. same thing uh, over and over again, huh? Just so yeah. if this is secret technology and Commander Fravor, Dave Fravor, who witnessed the Tic Tac along with uh can't remember her name, Dietrich. They they were flying together. She was in a different plane. They both saw it with their eyes, and then later another pilot. Underwood, I believe, recorded it. They, they saw it with their bare eyes. Later, it was recorded. The Pentagon has said it is unknown and it is official that it was part of the Navy. So he says if something was in development, a secret project back in that time, there is absolutely no way in 2021 we wouldn't have some evidence or be using it to benefit the United States. There's absolutely no way. If you have complete earth changing, maybe universe changing technology, you're not going to use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't believe that. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I don't know what's playing. I don't know what's playing behind you, but it looks like we've got, in, oh, no. uh, your mystery team. I just we went wrong. I don't know how long it's been playing I mean it's fine <laughs> I just feel like we kind of have like somebody else like listening to, to our interview it's funny <laughs> um yeah what were we talking about um yeah but it f feels like the answers are at Skinwalker Ranch to me because it's like that is where just all this the types of UFOs are happening it's like Brandon Fugel sees a flying saucer so that they got like Roswell. Okay. Um, and then you have all like the orb phenomenon, which it, again, like we were saying earlier, it's frustrating because an orb, you know, anybody could debunk it as a star or a drone or these things. If you see just a still image. So it's, it's, disclosure is hard because you really do you have to look at the testimony you have to look at the radar evidence and everything because these ufos are not a, I, it seems like they're trying to show themselves but they're not being overt about it and that seems to be on purpose and i, I don't know why we're just expecting you know to have our inst you know, our phone ready and they're just going to come by for a selfie. And um, I just, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. It's probably going to be weird like this, you know, you know, for a while, maybe, maybe our, our whole lifetime. Do you think we'll get an some answers in our lifetime? I do. I, I, I do. I think we're, I think we're going to get answers. I don't know if we're, no one's ever going to be happy with it, um, but I think there will be more answers. I mean, you, we had a, a senator walk out of the UAP task force meeting, the, the classified meeting. He would, almost looked like he'd seen a ghost. And he said he felt like he was walking out of the beginning of a science fiction movie. Like, this is a, and listen, I, I know our senators, uh, as humanity goes, we, we, we trust that they're only looking out for our best interest. And a lot of times they're not. But I have a feeling that there's there's a lot more that's going to be coming out. And I know for sure that there's a lot more that I've seen that will be coming out soon. So um, I don't know. The UAP task force director said that the videos that Mystery Wire and Jeremy Corbell have been releasing are the least compelling videos, the least. Bring so <laughs> yeah, if there's, if yeah. there's more, um, I'd love to see it. Do you think like, you know, somebody in Congress, you know, reading this UFP report for the first time, getting freaked out about it. How do you think UFO Twitter would handle it? So I know maybe, you know, um, people who aren't into this topic maybe reading that declassified report would be a little shocking. Do you think that you, I mean, I know we don't know what's in it. Um, 
but do you feel like is your gut that you know let's say George Knapp were to read this UAP report or you were to read this UAP report that you'd be like do you think your reaction would be yeah that's what I thought like that that's awesome that's what I was expecting or or do you think it would still blow your mind you know I know we don't know what's in it but um I have a feeling it would blow our minds. I really do. If that's a big deal. <clears throat> if it's going to blow our minds, who were people who like, I think the gray aliens might be real, right? So if, if for something to shock me and, and those who have been following this for so many years, I know we heard Lou Elizondo speak recently. Like if people were to find out the truth, that would be sobering. He said that, you know, on Team Z or, or something or um, recently. And so that definitely um, makes, there's a lot of, I feel like I'm, I'm extra tired, guys, and not, not feeling great this week. So I'm extra scatterbrained or hard to follow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of hopefulness about disclosure, right? And it'll almost like it'll bring all this future technology and world peace and health, right? And the alien, we can learn from the aliens and they're trying to protect us and all that. And I worry that it's not going to be all, you know, sunshine and rainbows like that. And it, it could get a little scarier, a little worrisome for a little while. I mean, what is, how do you think disclose if, if we are going to find out some stuff soon? I mean, what do you think this is disclosure is going to look like? Is this going to be a good time? Is this going to be a stressful time? How should we all prepare for it? Um, I, I don't know. I, I you know, I, I look at like, like I put this into perspective of my own, the people I know and the people around me, um, my mom and dad, uh, they're, you know, raised religious, they're Christian. Uh, we talked earlier, they, they live in Stephenville. They've met people. They talk to people that, are, that were witnesses to the Stephenville UFO encounters. Um, they, um, they aren't freaked out at all by it. They're, they're just kind of like, yeah, I mean, something, there's gotta be something else out there. It can't just be this. And, and I think it also goes back to, and this is a conversation I had with, Senator Harry Reid was like, you're, you're a Mormon, you're a very religious guy. How does this mesh with your religion? And he says, it meshes perfectly with my religion. He's like, you read, you read what goes on in the Bible and all the different representations of God and, and who knows that this isn't what they were experiencing. And to go further, the LDS religion does go into interplanetary and space and you know they mm -hmm. refer to them as angels and but a lot of it is very similar to kind of what we're experiencing now and maybe it's related mm -hmm. do you think you know working at mystery wire and and all that or, you know, before, you know, eight news now, do you think some of the reason your family isn't freaked out about UFOs that you could be one of those reasons? Yeah, there might've been, a, there might've been a little bit of soft disclosure going on. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Cause I definitely have a, a same feeling with, you know, my family and friends. I, you know, I feel like they've all always felt comfortable talking to me about this topic and, um, I hope none of them have been super surprised, you know, about, about the news. I always feel like that's really the best way, you know, everybody in the live chat who's well-versed in this, you know, talk to your family and friends about it. And um, we can all, we don't have to be freaked out about it. We can just have fun talking about it. And <laughs> even though it's getting real, <laughs> um, yeah, that's great stuff. Uh, I, I want to make sure to, to circle back to some, um, topics we're about to, to hit the hour mark here and we haven't we haven't talked about bob lazar so uh, obviously you know we talked about skinwalker ranch and you know you and george have done a lot of um cool stuff out at skinwalker ranch um obviously though 
You also got the Bob Lazar documentary and and that long relationship, you know, that George has had and that long like vindication, I guess, you know, of of Bob's story. So yeah, what do you have to share there? Yeah, it 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 feels like a little bit of vindication, but at the same time, uh, Bob gets hammered. He, I mean, n- no one suffers more from telling their own story than he has. Um, you can see it when he, whenever, you know, he, excuse me, whenever he did, you know, did take the time to do interviews. I mean, you could see it, you could hear the reluctance. Yeah. Um, I've been, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with him. Um, off camera, not just on camera. And, you know, initially he had even had a feeling that maybe there was a possibility that he was involved in some sort of psyops situation. And like, he's not completely discounting the fact that maybe he was a useful tool. Um, But as time has gone on and all these other cases have come up, the gimbal case, the Tic Tac, after, you know, you know, going through all the reliving everything he did for Jeremy's documentary, uh, Bob Lazar, Area 51 and Flying Saucers, he, he was, uh, he kind of came to a conclusion that he's like, you know what, if they were, if this was a psyop, then they used magic in their Mm psyop. And if they have magic, then that's just as amazing as whatever I was working on. And so if they were that good at their psyop, then they have a technology that is greater than, than the flying saucers he thought he was working on. So I don't, I, I know there's, you can talk for hours and hours on, on Bob Lazar, but I have personal experience. I've, been around him I've heard him tell the same story over and over and over with no change I've seen him on purpose not make a profit off of this situation he could have sold his story a thousand times he could be making paid appearances at all these different UFO fests, he he could be charging five hundred dollars for a handshake, an autograph, and a photograph with him at, at UFO Con if he mm-hmm. wanted to, and he chooses not to. Yep, I've never that, gotten to take a selfie with him, and I've taken pictures of met many people, you know, over the years. That to me says a lot. Maybe to other mm-hmm. people, that says he's scared of what he's concocted and doesn't want to take it public but to me it actually just says you're never going to convince the people that don't don't... go on joe rogan (laughs) right (laughs) you're afraid of yeah and that that kind of kind of leads back to ufo twitter and and how they've handled now once before i start hammering on people too hard i'd like to say that people have been super supportive They've been very understanding about the timing of these things and how we can't just dump everything out in one giant load. Like we have to vet this information. We have to make sure that that we're not having the wool pulled over our eyes, right? Like we don't want that to happen. We're, we'll look bad if we do that. Mm-hmm. But they question Bob. I get it. They can question him. I can't respond for him all day long. So but what about these Navy personnel that are seeing these things? They're questioning Commander Dave Fravor. This guy is the top gun, like the cheesy uh, thought of Tom Cruise flying through the air. That's this guy, except he's real and he's serious and it's not cheesy in any way, shape or form. They're going to just discount him. So we don't trust our best Navy pilots to tell us what they saw. We don't trust our best Navy pilots to be able to read their, their, their radar and their FLIR. We don't trust the radar people that, that work on the ships to properly read their radars. Mm-hmm. All these things come into one. And the task force has all this information. It's not just they've got a picture. They have all the stuff that makes it 
stick together. They have the glue. But where UFO Twitter is going to say, oh, Dave Fravor, he just, you know, he saw a plasma blob out in the ocean. They go, uh, no, these are trained pilots. They, uh, let's even talk about the, the, the pyramids, the green pyramids, night vision, Jeremy released it. Mm-hmm. So a seaman isn't going to know what's flying 700 feet off the deck of his ship. You can say what it is and, and you could say maybe it's a helicopter flying by or drones. You know, I think uh, the drive has done a, extent, and a lot of really great work about these events and they keep calling them drones. They seem to want yeah, to avoid I to use that. Mm-hmm. They don't want to use another word for it, but they're clearly doing things that no drone in our inventory can do. Um, someone even brought up once again, UFO Twitter that Lockheed once had a program sponsored by DARPA. They had a drone that could travel through the air and through the water. It was called the cormorant after a bird, the cormorant that dives and swims and pops up distances away from where it dove into the water. Um, It was never a functioning prototype. It was a DARPA program. The funding got completely cut. It's now, it is just a pipe dream. It, It was never produced. A model was never made. So, until you can show me a drone that can actually do these things. Stop calling uh, it a drone. Stop calling it a drone. You can call it a UAP. Yeah. That's, that's not a new term, by the way. UAP was used in the 50s for the farming, Farmington, New Mexico um, mm. armada. They had a huge uh, sighting in Farmington, New Mexico. I think it was 52. I can't remember exactly. But they used uh, UAP in that document as well so it's it's not a new so the seed the seeds were planted a while ago on the uap yeah um yeah so so it sounds like you know i mean you've met bob and you believe that he's telling the true events that happened to him and it sounds like even bob himself is like well obviously this is just what i was briefed on and you know maybe i was tricked right so i mean i that's I mean, I, I just have never felt that he was lying. I mean, I can't really say much more than that. It just doesn't seem like he's lying to me. It never has seemed like that to me. It's just, it always felt like he was telling the truth. And then as, you know, ever since his story came out and as more information has come out, every time I go and I read some supposed debunking of him, it just never it never materializes into anything. It never can hold weight. I remember somebody um, pointing out something that was in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, like a prop that inspired Bob Lazar's story. But the thing is, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, um, you know, J. Allen Hynek was consulting on it and it was very much like a, a project blue book, like disclosure type movie. So if there were commonalities, you know, between what Lazar experienced in Close Encounters, that doesn't, that doesn't change anything, you know, about my perspective. So that, that's usually when I, but, you know, I'm sure people will continue to um, try to debunk, debunk him. I'm sure it will never stop, but if they haven't done it yet, I just don't think they will. Like that would have already happened by now um, if it was possible to do. Yeah, I don't think any more pain, any more pain can be inflicted upon Bob at this point. And I wish him the most peaceful life because he he he's a great guy and uh, somebody that is so smart. He can explain something to you and make you completely understand what he's saying. And then you can turn around and try to explain it to somebody else. And you, you just, you couldn't even come close to repeating what he, what he well, does. So I mean, it's the perfect guy to try to teach us about this possibly alien, you know, te- technology, you know, whatever we're dealing with here. Well, shoot, man, that hour went by fast. There are so many more things um, I want to talk to you about. You should do more interviews. You, All right. You, really, you should you should definitely do this more. Well, before uh, before really we end, yeah yeah if you've got time please. Yeah, I just want to I just want to make sure I get in there that I want people to really understand how far this ball has been pushed up the field in like the past five years. 
people are disappointed. People are always complaining about what they're getting, but with the hard work that George Knapp has done over the years with the work that Jeremy Corbell has done. And believe me that it is work They're They are not just doing this. It's not just some guy just slips them a video and they decide to pop it up on the internet. There's so much more that goes into this. We have a giant corporation that owns channel eight that gave us the ability to make mystery wire. They went out on a limb. Like this is not a topic that, that is benefits them for us to, to be on, but they gave us the resources and the platform to make mystery wire. And that's a really big deal. They own more TV stations than any other operator in the entire country and probably the world for that matter. Um, so it was a big risk for them to take and for them to pony up for this, to, to be ready for the disparagement that they can get and just brush it off. That's, that's great. And also quickly, I'd like to make sure that I give Jim Martin from used to be orchard. Uh, he's now 1091 media, a shout out for, and I know it was a lot of coercion on Jeremy's part because he can be very coercive as we all know, mm -hmm. but for taking a risk and, and for helping us produce these movies, hunt for the skinwalker and the Bob Lazar movie, that was huge. Um, so um, helping push the ball up the field, giving us the platform and the resources to do it. And then Discovery Channel does a three hour live yeah, broadcast. It was epic. When's the last time you saw anything like that? And then Harvey yeah, Levin. Really awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. if, if it weren't for the work of Mystery Wire, and I will say George and Jeremy, that stuff wouldn't be happening. And, and I know like people don't like the way that, that these things get released, but they have to understand. First of all, we can't just release them when we immediately get them confirmed because what's going to happen on social media, it immediately gets taken, it gets retweeted, it gets, it gets regrammed, it gets stolen, it becomes not our material. So people complain about the watermarks, people complain about the hype building up to the UFO drops. There's a reason for that. We want as many eyeballs on our material. We don't want people to repurpose our material and then use it for their own gain because we worked hard to get it. So yeah. um, people have to understand that it's not, we're trying to hold information back. It's we're trying to release in a way it reaches the mass yeah. amount of people as quickly as possible. Yeah, it, it's amazing. I mean, Jeremy's another one that gets lots of hate <laughs> um, and it just kind of seems to, to roll off his back thankfully um and yeah i mean i know that we met you know through him you know years ago and so you know i went out to area 51 with him and so yeah i've seen the hard work behind the scenes i've seen the the energy and just all it takes to make this happen it takes a lot <laughs> to make this happen and so um yeah, but just, but we live in, you know, social media, sensational land and got to have hot hashtags and you've got to, got to do that. Right. We got to get people's attention. So yeah, I mean, preaching to the choir here, I totally get it. And I think probably, um, the people in the chat right now, um, the hardcore, uh, folks get that, but this, uh, video will live on and, and see some, um, more more viewers who might be of the more skeptical um and <laughs> kind of jeremy and george knapp hating group so i would ask those folks to uh just put yourself in their shoes you know and um you know what would you do you know if you were you know uh tasked with this because it it's a big well, it's a lot <laughs> It's a, it, it is to, to me where I, where I'm coming from, it is actually humorous that people would think that in some way, Jeremy and George are in some sort of psyop cabal with the government. And this goes back to Richard Doty and all the, the terrible things that Richard Doty did back in the day. And it's, it's really hilarious because George is one of my best friends in the world. He is a great guy. I have been around him for 21 years. I know, 
I would know by now if he was He'd some sort of agent of the gov- <laughs> government. Another thing, and let's let's talk about Jeremy for a second. We vetted Jeremy just as hard as we vet all these UFO videos. And believe me, like all of like George and I both, when we met Jeremy, it was like we were like, wow, this guy is like he is coercive. He's pushing us hard. Like he's really working us like this. Persuasive. Seems right. And so, of course, we didn't just jump on board the Jeremy wagon without making sure that we knew that his his goals and his interests were in the right place. So um, I understand people who don't know other people, they can create all sorts of conspiracies mm-hmm. in their head. But uh, believe me, it's uh, mm-hmm. it's way simpler than than what it looks. Yeah. And if you follow me here, you know, I met George. He's so nice. I've, you know, met Jeremy, you know, spent some time with him. Good people. So, you know, for, for what that's worth, you know, you've got two folks here, you know, who, who know these folks. And um, I so to me, Jeremy's been consistent, you know, with with the the narrative, if you will. You know, he's been consistent with everything he shared from when, you know, I first met him. And it's for me, it's just aligned with the truth that I've seen and the reporting and the research I've done. So to me, it's just kind of as simple as that. I see truth seeking and, you know, that's, that's where, where I try to follow. But shoot, we, we're um, almost at uh, 940 here. So I don't want to take up too much of your time. I kind of like to leave people wanting a little more. Um, but that said, do you have any like last nuggets or like cool behind the scenes or insights or any cases or any things um, you like to share with folks? No, probably, uh, probably nothing that uh, wouldn't take way too long. So I, I, the only thing I'd like to say is just um, I want people to understand, again, not to get repetitive. This is not something that just happens quickly. And even, even if we have information, which we know at heart is good information and coming from good sources, we just can't dump it out that would be irresponsible of us to do. It has to be done in, in a way that makes sure that we're not being fooled and we don't lead people the wrong direction because we don't want to be a conspiracy theory website. That's not no. what we are. We want to be journalism that focuses on the phenomenon and mysteries. And, and that's really what it boils down to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think you guys are doing a great job and I'm, ex- I'm really excited to see what what's coming next it sounds like we should all brace ourselves uh for the coming months coming months coming weeks could be could be days (gasps) coming days okay you guys heard it here first so yeah let's let's brace ourselves for disclosure 2021 i guess i'm just calling it um this was so much fun like i said you should definitely do more interviews i can tell you have a lot of really good stories and i hope that you'll come on again um well thank you in the future because i would love to talk maybe after maybe after disclosure we'll do like a a recap (laughs) all right Um, awesome well thank you guys to everybody in the chat we'll be live again tomorrow with chase klutzky so um that'll be really fun so you guys um make sure to subscribe. If you're not already subscribed, like, turn on notifications, all that typical stuff. It really helps. And I'm subscribed. Thank you. Thank you. And where can, excuse me. I'm just not, not my best today, guys, but Hey, we're alive. So that's just how it goes. Um, where can people follow you or where you prefer where I I know you're on Twitter and Instagram and yeah. Uh, it it's at, Chief Tog, Chief, and then T O G, and uh, ob- obviously at Mystery Wire, and, uh, and it, that's pretty much it. Uh, I kind of shut down my YouTube account because it was basically everything Mystery Wire is now, and so I didn't want to take away from that. So focus, yeah. So I, I think the links to both the Twitter and Instagram are in the description. So go follow Matthew, go um, give him some love, go give Mr. Wire and George Knapp some actual love on Twitter, drown out some of the, uh, uh, the hate, the, the jealousy, the jealousy is um, all this happened. So 
thank you so much again for coming on and um, 